Hi there, thanks for joining us. Today I'm speaking with Vivek Da, and he is the CBA's mining and energy economist. And we're going to have a chat about the dynamics that are currently in place where the lithium market is concerned. Viv, this is such a polarizing discussion. You know, for forecasters uh, always trying to pin the tail on the donkey in relation to what's happening with lithium. So many uh, varied expectations in relation to what could happen in the next couple of years. So when we just break it down, uh, the Chinese demand is a very important part of the picture. Uh, what else is significant in, in relation to driving prices? Sure. So look, look, China is the biggest market and you can just look at the size or what they contribute to global EV sales. So it, it very much, you know, like a lot of other mining commodities, it is very China driven. But there is clearly a, a trend outside of China that's that's not just emerging, it's it's really surging. Yeah. And it all comes down to the economics of electric vehicles. Yeah. Now if you look at the upfront cost of EVs across different sizes, so you know, small, medium, large, if you look at different jurisdictions, the expectation is the upfront cost of EVs will reach parity with internal combustion engines. We're almost at that point now, aren't we? Well from twenty twenty five to twenty thirty. That's really the the tipping points economically, which yeah. should see this this adoption rates really increase purely from an economic point of view, yeah. right? And that's really what is going to see lithium demand take, you know, a, a real leg up. And yeah. even in our, our our scenario where we just believe purely in in economic tipping points, so you just buy an EV because it's m more cost efficient than an internal combustion engine, you know, we're talking three to three and a half times more lithium demand by 2030 relative to 2022. So it, it's a very strong demand story, no matter what your assumptions really are right now, given how much this, this EV trend is, is going to get pace. Yeah. So what is a tendency amongst forecasters that is they overlay the lithium story with the pathway for the commodification of other resources over time? And uh, they often talk about how the uh, inevitable supply response will put significant downward pressure on, on prices. That has been talked about a lot um, for a while now, but it hasn't really reached that, that tipping point. How do you talk to that point? So look, if you see what's happened with, with lithium spot, you mean prices or even lithium chemical side, We've seen prices come off around forty-five to fifty percent from its its peaks but they late had last an year. Extraordinary Ex surge, right? and 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 that's the key part is if you compare it to to the start of twenty nineteen, we're still an order of magnitude higher. Yeah, you know, and 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 that's really where you set the context. Is demand is strong, yeah. supply has responded, and you know you could argue could we see a surplus like this year, next year, and you have different forecasters looking at it. But that supply response, it should be seen in a positive light yeah. because you want this this commodity to have enough supply. Because what we've seen, at least from from the battery side, is they are very very nimble. Yeah. Right now, this hasn't affected say lithium yet, but if you look at say battery chemistries, for example, you know the the nickel free, cobalt free, you know lithium iron phosphate chemistry, you know five years ago it was not even considered something that could be mass penetration of a chemistry. It was just seen as it just doesn't have the driving range for it. Yeah. We can't increase energy density enough. We're not going to get this LFP to be workable. Now, its market share is now closer. From last year was about 40%, from 5% if you look like you know five, six years ago. And it just tells you that this, this battery supply chain, particularly the battery makers, are very, very nimble. And so that has extraordinary implications about you know price response, making sure that there's enough supply because you could see massive changes very quickly because China has, has already proven they're very, very nimble when it comes to being cost competitive and, and improving technology very, very quickly. That's right. There are a lot of prospects, but I suppose it all boils down to you know the power that you can get out of the battery and how much that battery weighs because that is very significant in the overall calculation. It seems like this kind of blue sky between uh, emerging competitors and where um, the the current newest generation of lithium batteries are. Yeah, look, there's this, uh, you know, there's there's an opportunity and threat for lithium, you know, and 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 that should be the case, you know, like yeah. lithium has to be a market. It can't just be, you know, a commodity where it's like no substitution. And the biggest threat right now for me is is sodium iron, right? So, if you look at at, at driving ranges, for example, 
we're talking sodium ion batteries probably have a driving range of say 150 to 200 kilometers. So not enough for mass market penetration. Yeah. LFPs are probably closer to 250 to 300, yeah. and that's the sweet spot right now. But if you look at at what was achieved with the lithium ion phosphate, if we see a similar amount of attention paid to sodium ion, it has the potential to also go down that pathway. Yeah. And that's probably what we need to be watching is that, and, and why I think supply is so essential, is if you have enough lithium supply, you get prices to a level where battery makers are still very comfortable with the lithium story. Yeah, with the technology. And you won't have this massive shift towards more um, abundant minerals yeah. for for where the battery chemistry ends up. So so I think that's, you know, the biggest threat is sodium ion adoption and, and how battery makers look at it. And and that's more of a story for post-2030, but it is certainly a technology to watch because China is focusing their attention on it. The current thing that's holding the sodium um, story back is the extraordinary weight in terms of what is required to get a unit of energy out of something like a sodium battery. That's right. It's, it's energy density <clears throat> is its biggest drawback. Yeah. But to be honest, everyone was saying that about lithium ion phosphate, you know, five, six years ago. And so that's why sodium ion is being seen as more of a threat than I think the way people were thinking about it just a couple of years ago. Because what China, particularly like Cadell, managed to achieve with with um, uh, the iron, the lithium ion phosphate was was just extraordinary. Of course, Cadell is the world's biggest battery maker and um, arguably the leading force in relation to driving battery technology. So let's um, talk more about the near term. They're very big picture, um, decade long issues that will take to play out rather than anything that's going to be affecting prices now. How are you seeing the dynamics in the lithium market? Um, it's worth pointing out that the uh, Chinese have just uh, come up with a futures contract for lithium uh, um, literally days ago. Um, it's had a bit of a, a mixed start, but this is a really important evolution as well in relation to the part that lithium plays long term. When you have these sorts of futures contracts, the establishment of liquidity, being able to manage the risk in relation to prices, they're very important considerations, aren't they? Incredibly important. I, I can't tell you how important having a lithium futures contract is from stepping up you know, lithium as this commodity which is very, very small and, and nascent to something which is going to be you know, in competing with, with like the more established and mature commodities like copper, aluminium which is very firmly established and a very liquid futures trading market. So look, it'll take some time before it gets to that level, but these are all very, very good steps. And it actually gives you more certainty on supply coming online if we have a very robust futures market. And they both go hand in hand. So yeah, it is absolutely- Suppliers can manage their risk more effectively. That's right. And, and so that's something that I think will gain a lot more traction. And it is something that will give the market more confidence to invest in, in lithium supply particularly in, in terms of even debt funding, it just makes that far more attractive as well. So I suppose the important thing to note is that there's a suite of measures that China, the Chinese authorities in particular have announced in the last couple of days uh, without much detail, um, but at the same time, uh, is that likely to spill over into um, the, the picture for lithium and electric cars in China. Uh, subsidies play such an important part of the sentiment and outlook for, for, for lithium when it comes to, to China. Um, we've seen them unwind subsidies. Uh, is there any sense of those coming back? Look, I, I think a lot of the talk on, on subsidies and, and where China goes to with it will depend on, on how its, its economy tracks. Yeah. If you look at how China has traditionally made the economy grow, it has concentrated far more on, say, traditional um, infrastructure or property sector side yep. kind of stimulus. But we have seen a shift towards consumption and services. And particularly if that means a shift towards, you know, decarbonization technologies and that for China could see, you know, EVs really become um, even more, uh, more widely adopted. That's certainly where we could see more attention paid to. But it's important to note that China began all this, you know, 2009. They yeah. were well ahead of the game. Like, yeah. They looked at their domestic market and said, look, we have an issue with, with air pollution. EVs make sense from this angle. We're going to build out a battery supply chain and become as low cost as possible. So behind the subsidies, their entire battery s supply chain was established. Yeah. And they had a domestic market which was ripe 
for consuming those those products. Yeah. And I'm saying that is how we've already seen so much penetration in the Chinese market. Now, would we see the same levels of growth we've seen last decade? I'd say unlikely. Yeah. But it is certainly going to be something that they can use because it makes sense for the future to see more wider adoption of, of EVs. But already the economics are tipping. So it's is this worth putting money in or is it worth looking at other technologies to, to look at? So that's really the question that you can understand subsidies if the technology you know, needs extra help to be widely adopted. But if the economics are already there, then how much help does it need? And yeah. that's probably going to be the big question on the subsidy side that China has to grapple with as it looks to stimulate the economy. If we continue to see that 5% growth target for 2023 and yeah. potentially even beyond disappoint on the downside. Yeah. So the other thing to um, uh, get a sense of with lithium, it's the prices have come back quite a bit over the course of uh, recent times. Uh, is there a floor in place? Or how do you see the dynamics playing out given there was a big run up in prices that come back quite a bit I and mean, extraordinarily volatile? Yeah, look, it, it, we, we, we saw a peak at the end of last year and prices bottomed in May and we've actually seen it stabilize you know, about 5 to 10% higher than its lows in May. Yeah. And that goes across the chemicals and the spot you mean. Yeah. In terms of where prices will go, it's, I, I would say, you know, it is going to be very dependent on where China really puts, you know, uh, money where their mouth is in terms of that, that driving that demand story. But even what we're seeing in, in, in Europe and, and um, the US is, is going to be, be, be fascinating because they're also building out their supply chains. They also need, you know, lithium to, to, to build it out. And, you know, this is something which is going to grow, you know, I, I would say in the next five years, I would be looking very closely at, at, at EVs and, and how much policy is enhancing the economics and how big the acceleration is. But in terms of where, 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 where prices will go, you know, I, I would actually say we have a follow-up note that we'll be looking at this in more detail. But the, the, the demand side for me is, is going to be key and how the battery makers respond is, is the key trends to look at. Yeah, um, uh, you piqued my interest in relation to talking about that moment in time where the China is really lent into creating that whole uh, battery universe. When you compare it to uh, where the US and China are at, at the moment, you, they'd probably have to be about five years behind, wouldn't they, at least? Yeah, look, it, it, they certainly are starting behind. And it, it, it's it's interesting that if you see with the whole supply chain, yeah. it's 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 more on the mineral processing where they are very behind. Yeah. So China dominates that region, yeah. you know. And so your lithium chemicals, it's it's very much China led. And as you go further down to to battery cells, to battery packs, you do get a bit more U.S. and European market share. But right now, it's how do we build the expertise across the full supply chain in in the West. And and that is really being driven by this idea of resilient supply chains and almost trying to diversi diversify away from their dependence on China. And that's really going to be, you know, a whole story of, of a massive amount of investment. And, yeah. you know, the US has the Inflation Reduction Act, the IRA, and that's seeing an enormous amount of investment on the battery supply chain. And, you know, we, we had a look at how investment was tracking generally across the downstreams. And if you look at, at the the level of investment in, in the battery supply chain, it is actually globally um, quite healthy. It's oh. actually in line with a net zero scenario, which yeah. you can't really say for any other, yeah. you know, real decarbonization tech right now. Yeah. But where the focus is really is, is batteries, cathodes, anodes, you know, and that investment has been very, very healthy. But there are other parts like separators and electrolytes that are really underperforming. Right. But it's really important to understand that there's so much of a supply chain to look at. You've got mining, middle processing, anode, cathode, battery cell, battery pack, and then the EV itself. And if one part is lagging, it's 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 a point of failure in the entire supply chain. Yeah. So, you know, as as the ex China supply chain gathers more pace, the challenge is China's the specialist yeah. in building out manufacturing yeah. and the low cost. But if you rely on a more secure supply chain, expect to pay a premium yeah. for that. Yeah. And I think that's kind of the the two worlds that we're competing with is you have this this idea that do we want an economic and quick transition then you have to involve china yeah 
that if you want to have one which you want to prioritize security of supply, then it's going to be a more expensive and probably longer, longer decarbonization yeah. journey. Yeah. So where are the priorities? Where are the trade-offs? Were you comfortable? And those are the big questions right now that I think policy and investment have to answer in the next you know, five, 10 years. So as far as uh, I know you're looking at your lithium forecast at the moment, and in terms of the next 12 months, wh where are you erring in terms of the, the risks? Are you seeing that prices perhaps just consolidate around these levels or is there going to be more of a, um, a pivot towards the downside or, 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 or higher? So look, I, I think um, stabilization. I think right. you know we've we've seen it seen it run up yep. and then run it run down. Uh, I I think the 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 level of of demand is going to come back in a more surprising way. Right. And and that's something that that you know we noted in the paper that that there is technology evolving at a rapid pace, but just on the pure sheer volumes, that's something that is that that, that has caught our attention. So, look, I'd say stabilization and and where we are now. You know, seems fairly reasonable, but it is certainly something that um, you know we'll certainly address on the supply side because we look at supply costs um, to really determine where prices will go and end up. Yeah. But it's, it's it's the near term economic cycle that determines a lot of these prices, and that demand side is just like surging. And just getting ahead of that is is why it's hard to see, you know. A meaningful return to levels, you know, back to what it was a few years ago, looks very unlikely. And the question is, yeah, um, prices are coming off, but but don't be like the key message I'd say is don't be worried. This is good because, yeah, it's come off, but at least you know lithium will play there for the long term, because the threat is that we switch chemistries. Yeah. So you know, I I think th there's a there's a really balanced way to look at it as opposed to being like, oh, it should be higher for longer. Yeah. Because that has its own problems because it won't be for longer. And I suppose the, the other important point to make is that um, if there is a switch in chemistries, or uh, that supply chain that you discussed, um, I suppose, has to get retrofitted to an extent to create that new battery technology, right? So that pushes the time horizon out um, even further yeah, in terms look, of the d disruptive impact. Uh, absolutely. The, the benefit of sodium ion is, is they've argued they can use the same supply chains. Right. So that's why it's, it's a lot, you know, quicker in terms of just drop in and, and use the new technology. Yeah. But where that is clearly the risk is 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 the solid state. Yeah. And that's you know very much a, a longer dated story because of the supply chain response. Yeah. But I would certainly say the the way that China is approaching it and how quickly they get to commercialization. I know it's like oh it's a longer longer term story, but it has massive implications on demand if if it happens aggressively. Yeah. Like the to understand sodium uh, the solid state battery si situation is that just look at how, you know, and, and when I say solid state, right now, you know, the, the electrolyte, which, you know, uh, transfers lithium ion, it's, it's liquid. Yeah. We're just basically making that solid. Yeah. But what that allows is different anode technologies. Yeah. And the holy grail of that is, is lithium metal. And that is where your lithium demand can absolutely surge. Yeah. So, yeah, your low end can be eaten away with, with sodium ion, but your top end can become even more lithium intensive. Right. And so you have this balancing act which can really play out and, and certainly there's enormous investment for solid state. So as much as everyone thinks, oh, this is further away, further away, what what lithium ion phosphate showed us is don't bet on that because right. what China is able to do and commercialize is, is what has been probably the most ground groundbreaking theme we've seen in, in battery chemistries in the last you know five, 10 years. A lot's happened in a short space of time, Viv. So uh, fortunately, we've got you to guide us through uh, in terms of the um, you know, interesting parts of that conversation. So thanks very much for your time. And when you sharpen the pencil on the forecast, we'll have to get you back and have another chat. No worries. Thank you. Excellent. And thank you very much for joining us for the Executive Series.